What's up guys, it's Alden Anthony. Welcome back to the Civic Vlog that you hopefully know and hopefully love. In today's video, we're gonna be installing some cheap strut bars on the Honda Civic over here and find out whether or not they're any good. All right guys, so sticking with the budget-friendly modifications for my Civic, I decided to pick up a cheap set of front and rear strut bars for my Honda Civic over here. Now, I know a lot of people say, don't go cheap when it comes to strut bars, and I totally get it. However, I wanted to see how good or how bad these strut bars are and see if I can save a few bucks in increasing the performance and handling of my Honda Civic. Now, I got this particular set off of Amazon, but you can also get the same set off of eBay, and I will do my best to put those links down in the description uh, if these turn out to be any good. I really have no idea. So I'm gonna grab a knife over here, get this box torn open and see what I got. All right, so diving straight into it, got my knife here, cut this thing open and see how well these things are packed and what these things actually look like. Because in the pictures, they look pretty nice, but pictures aren't everything, guys. I totally get that. This right here, I can already tell you, is the rear. Oh crap, that's in there. Oh, well, that's why, there's a bracket on the end. We have our front, all right, and a couple things left here in the bottom. Okay. I'm gonna go the easier out. What is, oh, God forbid, it's stuck right in the middle. Okay, and that's it. All right, that's the last piece. So, taking a look at the front strut bar first. Get this thing out of here. Well, at least they double wrapped it. And right off the bat, it's a first impression. Um, <laughs> okay, so right when I see anything with uh, JDM as the branding, I can already tell you that's uh, it's probably not a good sign, but uh, cut this thing open. Oh, I just totally cut into the finish. My bad. Sport JDM, or is it JDM Sport? I don't know. I'm sure if you're a Honda guy, I'm sure you've stumbled across this at one point or another, or this brand on eBay or Amazon. Uh, this actually, believe it or not, had the highest rated reviews on eBay and Amazon. Everybody said they weren't bad, and that's why I chose to go with them. Now, I got this and the rear here for 70 bucks shipped, which was pretty cheap compared to a lot of the other ones. Now. I did some research, and I, by research, I mean I looked at some reviews, and I said, hey, that looks pretty good. Let's go with it. Let's cut open. And there we go. So that's the rear. I guess this guy right here attaches right through that hole, and that'll touch the rear strut. So again, these were 70 bucks shipped for the front and rear, which wasn't bad, because when I was doing a lot of the other research for a brand name, which could be the same exact thing with a brand name on it. Uh, the fronts alone were around 100 bucks. Uh, the rear were another 70 or 80. So I saved roughly 100 bucks going a little cheaper and going with a brand that had JDM in the name. Now what I'd like to do is take a nice All Day Anthony sticker and cover that up and uh, add my own branding to it. The All Day Anthony Strut Special. All right, so taking a look at here, basically what you have is you have a little bit of adjustability, and it looks like this whole assembly does turn, so where you can extend this or shorten it as needed. But from what I recall, seeing in the listing, this was meant for a 92 to 2000 Honda Civic, um, and would also fit some model years of the Integra. Now, for this particular one, I do remember reading in the comments that if you do have a D16 Y7 Honda Civic, that you would have to remove the air box and run an intake tube out of the top in order for this to fit. But I think this is pretty straightforward and this would go like that, like that. Oh, that would have to flip. So they're already on backwards. So there's that one. So it's gonna go like that. Those are on backwards, so I'm gonna have to flip those around. But it looks like it's going to be an easy direct fit. Now for the rears, I think I'm going to have to cut my carpet. And by think, I think I know I have to cut my carpet. So looking at the back here, sorry guys, windy day. Looking back in here, 
I will have to cut there and there to make this work. So I'll have to pull my sub out and the sponsor of this video, Scott's Turf Builder, Weed and Feed. Pick yours up at your local Home Depot. I'm just kidding. They didn't sponsor this video, but I will have to cut into there, make that work and cut into there and make that work. And so I'll pull the car in the garage before we do all that. Now, before we install any of the parts or do any cutting of the trunks carpet, I'd like to do a little experiment, if you will, and take the car out as it currently sits with the True Heart suspension and Koenig wheels to a nearby twisty road. And by twisty, I mean, it's literally just two turns and see how the car currently handles as the control. And then once we do that, get the car back in the garage, install these, take the car back out to the same spot and see if it did make any difference and if spending the $70 was worth it. So we're gonna jump in the car, hit the road and see what happens. All right guys, so we're in the car and on the way to this nearby twisty road. Now, as much as I would like to take this car out to a local canyon or something that actually has some major twisties, I'm working with the time I got and what I got nearby me. So this isn't anything crazy. It's just a quick left and right turn, but I'm gonna turn around, hit it again, and then hit it one more time just so I have a good idea and that I can remember here on the butt dyno. So it says to take it at 20, which I am obviously doing. All right, a little bit of rubbing on the front plastic fender up here. I think it's actually just on this little clip that I have. So, um, felt pretty good though. All right, so flipping around here, we're gonna do it the opposite way and see how it does. Just checking for body roll and how the car currently feels. Not bad, not bad. Again, I don't have the camber kits on the car yet, so that may help with that clearance. We'll have to see, worst case scenario, I can always take out those fender liners or try to mold them down the road. So far though, I'm actually really liking the suspension. Just the suspension on its own, I've really liked it. A lot of people say that it's really crap and they don't like True Heart. Dude, I have no complaints. For how much I paid and for how the car handles and feels now, I'm pretty happy with it. All right, last one, so let's make it count. All right, so I'm definitely getting some rubbing going into a corner that hard and that deep. Uh, I don't know if the camera can pick that up, but basically it's got quite the dip. So not only is it a turn, but it's dipping at the same time that it's turning. So I kind of expected I was going to rub, not as much as I did, but hopefully we can fix that or make it better once we get the camber kits installed. And then who knows, maybe these strut bars will actually help with rubbing. I really doubt it. I don't know how much they're gonna stiff up the suspension, but that's why I decided to do that quick little experiment. So we're heading back home now and I'll catch you guys in the garage. All right, damage control. How bad was it? Okay, so it definitely wore down that clip right there quite a bit. I think that's only really where I'm rubbing because I'm not feeling anywhere else where it's rubbing except for just that clip there, which I guess I could take the clip out. Wouldn't hurt anything. Same, oh yeah, <laughs> that one definitely wore down and you can see a little bit of rubbing here on the tire. So it's rubbing just on that clip, which is a good thing, not, not a bad thing. I think a little bit of camber could fix that or it can just switch to a different flatter clip uh, to hopefully uh, kind of remedy that. So let's go ahead and pop the hood open and get that front installed. All right, so first order of business is that I need to flip these brackets around because they installed them wrong. So pull that thing off. Oh, that's not what I wanted to do. Perfect. All right, so with that being like that, it's gonna go right in there, and that's gonna to extend to there. So we might have to back this out a little bit more. I think that's gonna twist out. Now, how far this twists out, I have no idea. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna measure this out and see what the distance is here. So we're looking at about one and a half inches there. All right, so what we're gonna do first, I'm gonna measure this out, make sure these are both even here. So we're looking at about one and a quarter there, one and a quarter. So let's mock this thing up and see how this is gonna look. One and a half as well. So it's pretty close. I mean, pretty much right there. So spin these on tight. We're gonna tighten those down and then we're gonna tighten down here. 
put on the other bolt on there and we should be pretty much done. All right, so my OCD kicked in. I had to measure it out again to make sure that it was perfect. Now what I want to do is I just want to close the hood and make sure that it does in fact close. Looks like it's got plenty of clearance, so moment of truth. No bends in the hood and I think we're golden. So uh, let's go ahead and tighten these things down. So this takes a fat Allen key. So make sure you have a fat Allen key because this thing's freaking huge. And these brackets will actually begin to bend and kind of cinch together and that I think is normal. So let's pray they don't break off. And the last thing to do, take our 17 millimeter wrench. And I don't know if it's the last thing to do or the first thing I should have done, but cinch those down so that doesn't turn. All right, so that's the front. Pretty, uh, pretty painless, pretty simple. Now, is this as stiff as I would like it to be? No, not exactly. I really like the ones that mount to the firewall and kind of have that trifecta effect. But I mean, for what this is, for an adjustable one, I'd say the weakest spot is probably just right here on that bracket. Other than that, you don't really see any, any major flex, but I think, I don't know, I think it'll do the job. So let's go ahead and pop the trunk open and get that rear knocked out. All right, that's gotta go. It's been in there for far too long. And we're gonna take out this as well. All right, so what I need to figure out is where I actually need to cut because I think it's right here. It's where I need to be, but I don't wanna cut anything that I don't necessarily need to cut. So what we'll do is hit that, push that forward. I'm just gonna pull this out. Okay, so it's, yeah, it's right there on that bulge. I just realized this is kind of scary because if I mess this up, that messes up this whole entire carpet here and uh, let's pray that I get this thing, uh, I get it right. All right, I got it. Yeah, I'm gonna need to go quite a bit bigger than that, I think. I think that's gonna work. Just a nice little, nice little hole, nothing crazy. I don't need it to be super big. I think that's pretty good. So I gotta bring more out from there. I can even cut down a little further. Yeah, we'll keep going. I think the height is about right though. The height's about right. I just need to go for a bigger circle there. That looks pretty good. Pretty good, Anthony. Not a professional at this, but you know, not bad. Okay, so we're gonna pull the carpet down, get those things unbolted, and then go from there. So we didn't really need to cut a whole lot of space out of there. I think that's actually perfect, and that was just a lucky guess, I've never installed these before. I just assumed you didn't really need to cut a whole lot and that's pretty much money. Okay, so I'm a little out of breath right now because I've been wrestling these bolts here. So I was able to mount these brackets in here through the back side and have them kind of fish upward and then mount them onto those bolts to make it to where I didn't need to cut any more than what was necessary because realistically, if I wanted to tighten those, I'd have to pull back that carpet and I totally get it for convenience purposes, but this just looks so much better having a smaller hole there. So from there, now all we have to do is mount our bar here. So I'm just going to measure the length, make sure it's somewhat even, and then attach these bolts here through those main brackets. All right, so same thing for the rears here. Got our big ass Allen key, 14 millimeter. Just gonna come to the backside here and sew it all up. All right guys, and the rear is done. So looking at this angle, it's a little wonky. It's not the most perfect design here, but this thing is pretty freaking rock solid, guys. I mean, it's not budging at all. And I'm really glad that I didn't cut any more of that fabric than what was necessary because I think that's gonna look really good after we get everything buttoned up. So let's get the sub back in so I can bump some tunes and clean this up. 
All right, guys, with everything sewed up, the last thing we need to do before we go for a drive is put on our All Day Anthony sticker. I wasn't kidding when I said that. So that's gonna go, sure. Not a perfect fit, but it's better than seeing that JDM logo. So let's hop in the car and go for a drive. All right, guys, so heading back to that very same spot, the car handles just fine. I mean, in terms of feeling tight, oh God, I look like a crazy person. It feels solid. I, I, don't, I don't know if it feels better um, yet, but I mean, it feels pretty good. I don't hear any weird clunks or clinks or dings or anything like that. So I know we at least did something right, but so far, yeah, it feels pretty good. We're gonna see how it handles in the turns. So second set of turn. That was better. That was, I will honestly say that that was better. It was definitely better than not having them flip around. We'll hit it one more time. Pretty hot here guys so we're gonna see good minus the rubbing that is still apparently there that felt that felt pretty good 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 rubbing That is, that is better than not having the strut bars. I will honestly say that. Yeah, that's just that's just good fun. I, I, like I said, I love that corner. It's fantastic on a bike. It's even better in the Evo. The Evo really loves that corner. The Civic, it's learning to love it and I'm okay with that. All right guys, so we're back home and everything is still in one piece. So none of the welds broke, all of the bolts are still tight and I know that doesn't say much for only taking four turns, but hey, I'll take it. So guys, I really enjoyed making this video. It's kind of fun debunking uh, cheaper products to see if they're actually any good. Now, are these the best? Are they perfect? Absolutely not. Honestly, like I said, I'd rather go with an actual welded support that didn't have any of these weird adjustments here. So this was even sturdier for the front and the rear. But hey, for 70 bucks, man, I, I'm not complaining. It is what it is. And But down the road, I could always upgrade to some nicer strut bars or even some lower tie bars to make the car handle even better. But again, I'm not complaining. I think it's great for 70 bucks. Now, if you were to ask me how much better the car handled, I'd probably give you a percentage like uh, maybe like 40, 50% better. I mean, it was an improvement. There's no denying that. Now, it wasn't crazy because there's a lot more to suspension components than just a strut bar. I mean, like I said, once you do the rear tie bars, once you put the camper kits on, the rear control arms, all of that, I think it's all going Going to add to the grand scheme of a better handling Civic. But again, for 70 bucks, man, I, I can't complain. I think it's good. I think it looks all right, you know, after you cover that JDM Sport logo, but it adds some flair to the front, adds some flair to the rear. If anything, I would say for your daily driver, this would pretty much be a visual thing. You might notice it in a couple turns, but other than that, not really crazy, nothing super noticeable. Now, if I were to have done this install differently, I would have done the front just like I did the rear with mounting the black brackets first and then putting the actual bar on it and then putting the bolts through. It was kind of a pain in the ass adjusting it and twisting it with the brackets on. So again, put the brackets on first, then put the strut bar, slide the bolts through and then button everything up and it'll be much, much easier. Again, I had a lot of fun making this video. So if you guys like this video, make sure you give me a big thumbs up. You can subscribe down below for more Civic content in the future because there's gonna be plenty of it and I'm having a lot of fun with this car. I appreciate all you guys watching. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Salt Anthony. Peace.